Hi everybody. In this brief video, we will see the healthiest cookware choices. In my last video about the PTFE, that is the Teflon and its health implications, I got tremendous number of responses from your paper. And many questions came, uh, what are the other alternatives for the Teflon and is copper cookware really safe? So we are going to cover all these uh, different kinds of uh, cookwares. You know, of course, the consumer choice is the informed decisions. Uh, you know, the science informed consumer choice is one of the main uh, focus of my channel. So, in this episode, it's a very brief video, but we are going to cover a lot of cookwares and what are the implications and which among these cookware choices. Uh, the material choice is the comparatively healthier. So we are going to cover, of course, a brief on the PTFE, that is Teflon coated cookware, aluminium, earthenware or clay or stoneware, ceramic, glass, copper and copper bottom steel, brass, bronze, hard anodized cookware, stainless steel, carbon steel and cast iron or enameled cast iron. So we are going to cover a lot of cookware choices. So first is non-stick. We have already explained in my last video. In case you missed it, please check it out on the top. I've already linked up that uh, earlier video, which I got tremendous number of responses and likes. So this is about the non-stick, that is PTFE or polytetrafluoroethylene, uh, which is a plastic. Basically, it's a polymerized plastic uh, invented by DuPont, a multinational US company. You know, then marketed as a, a, it as Teflon. So Teflon as such is not toxic, but when you produce a Teflon, there is a chemical called PFOA, that is perfluorooctanoic acid or PFA, which is toxic, which is actually uh, a carcinogen, that is actually a cancer inducing and host of other diseases as well. So, uh, you know, most of this non-stick cookware, when you heat it, you know, this chemical leaches out into the you know whatever you are cooking so it's not really a good one because the PFOA is banned in many of the nations uh, for example the US or Europe uh, or Japan it has been banned but here in India it's not banned and that is why even the expensive uh, non-stick cookware which you buy might contain PFOA uh, you know so don't risk your life by uh, cooking in the non-stick so my advice is completely avoid it. Coming next is aluminium uh, very popular across the Indian subcontinent right aluminium is uh, very inexpensive and uh, the heat distribution is also pretty good so the, the that is what the thermal conductivity that it, it has got excellent thermal conductivity and the weight is also very lightweight but mind that aluminium is toxic it's neurotoxic it gets leached out when acidic foods such as tomato or lime or curd that is the heat etc cooked you know the citric acid or uh, lactic acid when you cook it uh, then this aluminium get leached into the food and it, it is a neurotoxic uh, substance so that basically Alzheimer's disease and other uh, you know the neuronal implications you might be more prone to if you regularly uh, cook and consume the food uh, which is prepared in aluminium dishes so my advice is use this aluminium dish, dish only for boiling water which is comparatively safer avoid the general use how about earthenware or clay or stoneware? This is, you know, it's a tie from time immemorial. We have been using this earthenware, pottery, for example, right? So are these really good? So many say that the food tastes great when cooked in earthenware. Uh, for example, in Kerala, you know, uh, if you cook rice and uh, fish, uh, you know, in traditional recipe, in the earthenware, it tastes so much better. That is what a claim is and uh, uh, but the problem is that it's very slow in cooking because the the energy efficiency and thermal conductivity is pretty low and also it's very fragile so you are wasting a lot of energy resources in cooking in the earthenware you know and also of course it's fragile uh, so it cannot withstand repeated uh, you know uh, this heating cooling cycles and it's very porous too, so it, you cannot wash it with soap. So in case you wash it with soap or detergent, mind that these extremely small uh, cavities of this earthenware can trap all these, uh, you know, the detergent residues and get released uh, when you cook something in the next time. So it's not advisable to wash it with detergent or soap. You know, so my advice is you it can be avoided because we have a lot more uh, better, safer and uh, you know long-lasting and affordable alternative to the earthenware. 
how about ceramic or ceramic coating so basically this coating uh, is only the surface coating it can be anything in below for example aluminium with the uh, ceramic coating or cast iron with ceramic coating it can be anything so how about the coating as such the ceramic coating it is non toxic and it's pretty affordable too uh, but the problem is that it's not really non-stick you know teflon coating is different it's completely non-stick you don't really have to use uh, oil at all but for the ceramic you have to use oil so coating doesn't last that is one of the disadvantages of the ceramic coating uh, coated cast iron skillet for example it chips off and uh, you cannot use metal utensils you know because it can uh, cause damage to the the ceramic uh, cooktop and may also contain uh, and it can leach also the lead and cadmium uh, you know if you purchase poor quality of brand uh, ceramic uh, cookwares so my advice is it's a good option if proper care is provided that means without using any uh, steel spatula use only silicon or wooden spatula and stick with good brand so if you stick with good brand it's perfectly fine ceramic cookware Coming next is glass. It's now coming uh, to a trendy, you know, the, the glass cookwares are coming to be like a fancy uh, addition to the modern kitchen, right? It's uh, pitted as one of the necessities of the kitchen. So how is that? It's an inert material and of course glass has, uh, it's completely transparent. So, you know, you can see through what is actually being cooked in it. So, and it conducts pretty good but the problem is that the heat distribution is uneven so that means that if you cook in one place so heat is really distributed in that particular point not everywhere you know so uneven heat distribution is a problem if you cook in the glass and it's not good for the stove top you know so uh, there is issue with that but if you use uh, this one for the microwave it's perfectly fine plus glass is fragile and glass do contains lead and cadmium especially if glass is uh, poor grade and uh, you know poor make uh, the, the brand matters when you buy the you know uh, good quality glass for example borosilicate is a pretty good one right so uh, lead and cadmium often used to manufacture the glass so in case of the poor quality glass it can leach out as you know the lead has neuronal implications and cadmium as well both are heavy metals and it leads to the low IQ level you know so the intelligent level will be quite low uh, you know in case of the lead poisoning of course lead is everywhere these days uh, leaded petrol for example in one point in time the petrol used to contain the lead you know and that has led to decreased IQ level in urban population compared with the rural population so nowadays leaded petrols are not very common in the market so my advice is it can be avoided because we have better alternative to the glass cookware and how about copper you know copper has been touted in uh, traditional Indian uh, you know the, the culture or uh, you know the, the gastronomy or epicurean uh, tradition that the, we often use copper cookware in one point in our history so how is this copper cookware the, the beauty of the copper is that it is excellent in heat conductivity and if you really look in the literature, copper is also antimicrobial, you know, so it has got several good properties, but mind that copper is toxic. Copper causes a disease called copperidus, you know, copperidus, of course, a neurotoxin, and especially it gets leached when you cook acidic food in it. As I told you, a tomato or lime or you know pickling or uh, vinegar or uh, you know the, the curd anything these the, all these acidic food should not be cooked in copper vessels so my advice is to stay away the copper as such because it is toxic it's very well known fact that the copper is toxic and the same advice uh, goes with the copper based water bottles too uh, because the copper is antimicrobial people are thinking okay let us go with the copper uh, water bottle because it can destroy the bacteria of course it can destroy the bacteria it can also destroy you this is the problem with the copper copper when it gets leached into the uh, food or drinks uh, you know when you when it gets entered to our system then it can cause serious ramification including alzheimer's disease friends so stay away from copper uh, uh, you know as much as possible so that is why the copper water bottles i will never advise anybody to go with this copper water bottle how about brass you know brass is basically an alloy of copper and zinc of course it contains copper a, a major part of this brass even bronze 
is copper so uh, of course uh, you know it is uh, uh, the heat conductivity is pretty good it's exactly like copper so that is the beauty of these brass vessels the conductivity is really good but copper is toxic as i told you copper hydrates and gets leached when acidic food is cooked in the brass so my advice is to stay away don't trust your uh, you know the tradition that's a fallacy you know uh, because we have been cooking in a uh, brass vessels uh, the picture that we portrayed here this is called uruli uruli in kerala you know this one is basically the traditional culinary uh, uh, tradition of the, the kerala culture right for uh, hundreds of years we have been cooking in this uruli right so uruli is basically brass uh, the problem is that as i told you it, it, the copper get leached into the food so it's not safe my advice science informed advice is to stay away from brass uh, or bronze the next is bronze so the as you know the brass i told you is an alloy of copper and zinc while bronze is the alloy of copper and lead both are toxin i would say bronze is a lot more dangerous than brass you know bronze i mean if you look in amazon you can see a lot of copper and brass and bronze cookware uh, they, they 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 say it's ayurveda informed and these are really good but no mind that these are extremely poisonous especially bronze avoid by all means because lead is also a neurotoxin so as copper uh, of course it is uh, the, the heat conductivity thermal conductivity is very high because of the copper but copper is toxic and it gets leached when you cook acidic food in it and also lead is also dangerous so please stay away from anything uh, which which contains copper including bronze brass and copper vessels but at the same time other use of the copper uh, you know for, uh, for example this kind of uh, uh, door knobs and door handle this is a, a traditional uh, style i'm not saying vastu it's not part of vastu but it's a, it's a part of the traditional uh, architectural style especially uh, in kerala this is basically the temple uh, looks like a temporary kind of door knobs you know so this is perfectly acceptable this sort of use uh, we are not consuming it right so these are much better because uh, this no uh, door knobs and door handles are being touched by so many people and if these handles are made up of an anti microbial substance like copper it's a lot better you know so this is basically brass while this one is bronze uh this uh, you know the door handle is bronze or it could be copper as well so copper brass or bronze no knobs are absolutely fine but not as a cookware or a, a water bottle how about copper bottom steel it's basically a steel but a little bit part uh, is copper bottom is it safe it's absolutely safe because the food is not in touch with directly in contact with the copper you know so it's it's perfectly fine but you know i would rather say it's more or less an advertisement gimmick because the copper is only a little bit while majority of this uh, you know the, the section is steel so rather than going for this kind of gimmick uh, you know copper bottom steel just go with the normal steel what's the problem with the three ply steel cookware stainless steel cookware is so much better than uh, this kind of copper bottom steel cookware how about stainless steel you know the stainless steel or ss is an alloy of iron and carbon you know carbon and iron and as the name says it's stainless it doesn't get rusted so there's no oxidation happening uh, because of the uh, you know the carbon constituent of it so small quantities of nickel chromium and phosphorus could be there too you know so stainless steel has got lots of good qualities as a very you know a, a, as a, an acceptable cooking solution cookware so uh, it's it has got excellent heat conductivity but mind that cheap quality stainless steel made out of scrap recycled metals can reach out nickel to the food you know so nickel con uh, constituents could be very high in the scrap metal and nickel is toxic and even scrap metals can even be containing radioactive substances you know who knows what this scrap material you know metals do have so that is why stay away from uh, very cheap quality uh, you know this kind of a sta stainless steel cookware so if you buy a good quality cookware uh, of the reputed brand it can last a lifetime so there is no point in uh, not spending your money cautiously for you know one or two cookware i do have one skillet uh you know it, it, I, i do majority of cooking in one cast iron skillet so if you have like if you live alone so you really don't need a lot of cookware you know just it's better to invest in a one good quality 
uh, you know the cookware uh, for example this kind of all clad cookware is very expensive that is uh, you know that is actually the, the reality all clad is pretty expensive but we do have several uh, you know several alternative to the all, all clad is, a, uh, is an American brand but we do have indigenous stainless steel uh, reputed brands so you can you can uh, safely buy it you know so my advice is high quality stainless steel cookware is a healthy choice so you can stick with the brand and more than that stainless steel is induction so this symbol is basically the induction cooktop so it's it's okay with the indu induction uh, stove you know induction cooktop you can cook thing because it, it is a magnetic uh, you know the conductor so no problem with stainless steel but in uh, all all the materials that we covered earlier like clay and uh, aluminium are not induction safe okay so now next is carbon steel this is now uh, getting very popular especially in the us europe and japan and what is this carbon steel it's like stainless steel as i told you stainless steel do contain carbon but the carbon steel contain uh, the carbon uh, percentage is a bit higher so it gives plus and minus what is the plus is basically the lightweight but it's really really strong so it's iron and carbon with carbon content is typically two percentage so minimum two percent carbon needs to be there in the carbon steel so it's just like stainless steel only the difference is the carbon cost is quite high and is very expensive and it do require seasoning if not it will rust it's just like cast iron cast iron is just pure iron you know, you, you need to coat it with a little bit of oil or any stuff which actually prevents, uh, you know, the, the water. You really need water and oxygen for oxidation, isn't it? So if you prevent the contact with water by, uh, you know, putting uh, a thin layer of oil, cooking oil, that is called seasoning. So if you do that, the seasoning, then it will not get rusted. Otherwise, carbon steel can be rusted. It's not a stainless steel. And it's reactive to the acidic food as well that you know this uh, carbon steel but uh, you know of course uh, the problem is with the cookware not really with the food because even if the the carbon or iron get leached into the food these are absolutely fine because the food already contains a carbon and iron is nutritious right so but the problem is that your cookware uh, you know uh, will keep on getting degraded if you don't put proper care for it so my advice is that high quality uh, carbon steel cookware is a healthy choice so you can stick with the brand and uh, these days carbon steels uh, are getting cheaper as well it's a pretty affordable tool and of course carbon steel is induction compatible right so it's a it's a healthy choice i can i can vouch on it how about hard anodized it's again it's coming very common these days and if you search in online retailers uh, you know they are selling uh, this uh, it's, it's really popular the hard anodized so it's basically aluminium that you should know that hard anodized it looks like uh, I mean it's it's black in color polished out the exterior just like this one the Futura has this uh, you know uh, this uh, this particular cook and serve bowl uh, and this is a hard anodized right so hard anodized means it's aluminium vessel uh, with electrochemically oxidized to create an inert surface so surface is oxidized you know and this oxidization is not achieved by simply painting or coating but it's electrochemical you know cathode and anode in a solution the, the dip in a solution so it, it's electrochemical so that means that the bonding is really strong and it's an atomic level so don't worry anything about the coating being dislodged it, it can never happen in your lifetime so it is absolutely fine and safe and because it's aluminium it's excellent heat conductivity and high heat doesn't destroy the coating and it's really affordable too so hard anodized cookware is my number one recommendation if you're looking for a affordable safe alternative to all these advertisement gimmicks and uh, the coating is really important why hard anodized is better than aluminium as you re remember we have already covered aluminium aluminium is toxic while hard anodized is already coated with oxidized aluminium and because of this coating you know aluminium never gets leached into the food even if you cook uh, really acidic food for example tomato or uh, ketchup or I mean you know curd or whatever you, you cook acidic food no problem at all the hard, hard anodized cookware so this is my number one recommendation it's really lightweight and it's really you know cheap uh, you know affordable and very high quality and it can really last long 
you know so how about cast iron so cast iron is also getting really popular these days and another variant of cast iron is enameled cast iron so uh, the porcelain coating ceramic coating comes uh, in inside the cast iron so it's basically a cast iron with ceramic coating so given these two choices uh, cast iron or enameled cast iron i can always say cast iron is more healthier not enameled because enameled one is you know the food is not directly touching the cast iron the iron but rather it is touching the ceramic ceramic is also quite fine uh, given that uh, the brand is reputable you know so but the cast iron is superior because the cast iron is basically nothing but iron and if you if the iron get leached into the food uh, it's very good uh, you know the iron supplements we are taking right and iron containing uh, uh, vegetable like spinach we are we are taking because iron is an essential element and iron leaching the iron into the food is a good thing you know but enamel cast iron is actually good for your cookware because uh, if you put an enamel then you really don't need to do uh, a lot of uh, you know seasoning otherwise if you buy a cast iron this is a it's a usual cast iron uh, you know the frying pan so if you have this kind of cast iron it's really heavy and you have to season it you know so the seasoning part it can be completely avoided if you have an enamel custom so that there is advantage as well so iron is non-toxic and leaching to the food is good thing but too much of the iron is bad too and it retains the heat for really long so if you cook it a little bit in a very low flame and if you turn off the burner it can really retain the heat for hours so that's an advantage of this cast iron skillet and um, I have one uh, cast iron skillet which I've been using uh, for most of my cooking, uh, frying or you know boiling or sauteing. Everything I do with one skillet which I just put next to my uh, you know stove because it's pretty heavy, almost six kg. You know, so I really don't have to bend uh, to retrieve uh, this cookware from a uh, from a bottom or up. You know, so it's much better if you keep just next to your cookware or cooktop. You know, uh, the issue with the cast iron is that these are prohibitively expensive and it requires seasoning. If not, it will rust. Seasoning is really important, a thin layer of oil, you know. So, uh, one solution is that go with enamel cast iron with the uh, uh, ceramic coating or porcelain coating. So, enamel cast iron doesn't require the seasoning, still, it's pretty heavy, you know. So, my advice is that a uh, cast iron is a healthy choice and you can stick with non brands. So one cast iron skillet can uh, last uh, your life long, even your next generation can support it. That is what the story is, uh, if you read it, you know. So people have been using it for 300 and 400 years, just one uh, cast iron skillet, that's the beauty of it. Yet another advantage of cast iron is that it is induction compatible, you know. So you can cook it in the induction cookware, but mind that this sort of, uh, you know, the round bottom is not good for the induction because the induction stoves are flat. So always buy a flat cast iron skillet which you can use in induction as well. Induction, by the way, is really energy saving way of cooking. Uh, but of course, steaming is so much better. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of steaming because the steaming can significantly lower your carbon footprint. So in summary, uh, the following uh, options are not safe. So my advice is to stay away non-stick that is PTF your Teflon cotton, aluminium uh, because the acidic food is not good, copper and anything that contains copper including brass and bronze and uh, the following are really good option, the healthy option, ceramic, hard anodized, stainless steel, carbon steel, cast iron or enamel cast iron and earthenware, clay or stoneware, copper bottom steel, these are mostly advertisement gimmick, my advice would be you know there are better options rather than spending your hard-earned money on glass and copper bottom and earthenwares and all. Well, my other advice includes never fall for any kind of uh, you know set sale. Uh, for example, if you look in the Amazon or Flipkart, the great Indian sale is going on, and there are a lot of offer if you buy in set. For example, a set of six different uh, non-stick cookware. Friends, not even one non-stick cookware you should never buy because it's not safe one option. And more than that, you know, you will end up uh, stockpiling a bunch of vessels you will never use. 
And it's the same thing that is applicable for the knives also. You know, if you if you buy a set of knives, uh, six or eight knives, what will you do with all these knives? Just one or two knife is perfectly fine. I have just two knives. One is paring knife that I use it to peel out something, and the another one is a normal uh, tomato knife. Uh, the two knives would solve most of your problems. You no, know? there's no point in going for a set of eight knives. And uh, mind that steam cooking is so much better alternative to the skillet-based traditional cooking because it preserves the nutrients and also it takes significantly lesser time. Of course, there is no contact with the cookware material. So if you are doing the steam cooking, it's perfectly fine to use it in uh, uh, aluminium. My vegetable steamer is a, a you know it's a stainless steel, so you can buy it and it's it's very much affordable. You know, uh, it can uh, really reduce your carbon footprint because it saves a lot of your energy and you know money as well so and the teflon or pfoa is definitely toxic so please stay away from non-stick cookware well other than pfoa that is the chemical that uh, usually the teflon cookware do contain uh, uh, you know other than this one the teflon containing pfoa toxicity of other materials which we covered in this episode might not be clinically significant that also you should understand that so if i say like copper is really toxic of course it is toxic but it might not be clinically significant you know so you really need to eat uh, breakfast lunch and dinner continuously uh, for many years uh, to get the manifestations of all this problem but it's always better to avoid something which is uh, definitely toxic so instead of simply uh, thinking of the intuition so you know uh, hoping for the best so it's always better to make consumer choices and decisions based on the evidence and what science say and thanks for watching and if you like this episode please click thumbs up and uh, you know subscribe to my channel and share it in the relevant groups i will see you soon in my next video have a great day